Okay, let's try to solve for the sample final exam. We did some of the problem in last Thursday's lecture. Let's finish the rest of that. So here's problem one. So you have a clock. This is a bad clock, let me just insert. Better circle, insert. Well, draw shapes. So this is the clock. Um, at 12.30 was a degree measure of the small angle between the hour hand and the minute hand. So it's at 12. And here is uh, six. So here's one. So around 12.30 the minute the hour hand will be pointing in the middle between 12 and the one and the minute hand pointing towards to uh, six. And we know between 12 and the one, the degree will be uh, 360 divided by 12 will be 30 degrees. So we know that that part here, uh, at 12.30, this angle will be half of that will be equal to 15 degrees. So the what we have here should be 180 minus that one, uh, 15 degrees, you have 165. So the answer is 165. Uh, convert 14 pi over nine to degrees. So you multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. Cancel, what you have is 280 degrees. The answer is D. And the reference angle for uh, 1,040 degrees, and we know uh, 1,080 degrees minus 40 degrees. So put this in the standard position. 180 degrees is like um, three times 360, so three revolutions, but you're short of 40. Excuse me, 40 degrees. So it goes to one revolution, two, and the three, but a short of 40 degrees. So here is the terminal side. So that tells us the reference angle will be uh, 180. Our web is just 40 degrees. You want to use uh, this terminal side. Oops. You want to use the terminal side and with the positive direction of x axis, and this one is a 40 degrees. So the answer will be B. And next, the problem find the length. Uh, if the arc of the circle of radius R is equal to 19.73. The central angle is 209 degrees. So what do we need to do? We're going to use uh, S equal to R times theta. And R is equal to 19.3. Theta, you have to convert that into um, radian. So you multiply by pi over 180. So if I bring my calculator, so let's see what do we have. So I'm just using calculator here. So we have 19.73 times 209 degrees multiplied by pi and divided by 180. The answer what I have is 71.97. So the answer is about 71.97. So the answer will be D. Number five. So sine theta is equal to positive or negative one minus cosine squared theta. 
in this case, uh, your theta is in the second quadrant, so your sine theta should be positive. So should be positive of so plug in. Seven over twenty-five. For cosine theta, you have uh, the answer will be twenty-four over twenty-five. So your tangent theta should be equal to sine theta over cosine theta, and the width minus um, twenty-four over seven. The answer is E. Another way to solve for this is we can get a secant theta, which is equal to the reciprocal, which will be 25 over seven. And then we can get tangent square theta is equal to secant theta squared minus one. That gives you um, seven squared over 24 squared. And now you take the square root because your theta is in the second quadrant. You have to take the negative square root. So once again, you have minus 24 over seven. So you evaluate this thing here. So um, we have um, 20, 15 pi over six. Let's simplify this. 20, 16 pi, uh, 15 pi can be written as 20, 16 pi minus pi over six. So that gives you about um, two, three, six pi minus pi over six. So because cosine is a periodic function, so what we have here, this one is equal to cosine of 236 pi minus pi over six. And that will be equal to cosine minus pi over six. Cosine is an even function, so that's just equal to cosine pi over six, and which we know is equal to root three divided by two. So the answer is D. Number seven, what we're going to do is just uh, replace x by four secant theta. We square that minus 16. So you have 16 secant square theta minus 16. Pull out 16 secant square theta minus one. And then use the trick identity. This is equal to 16 tangent square theta. You take it to square root. Because your theta is in between zero and the pi over two is the first quadrant. So everything is positive. So you end up with a four tangent theta. So the answer is C. So go to the next one, number eight. Secant theta is equal to three over five. So what do we have? We have two sides are three in the X by the Pythagorean theorem. The third, the hypotenuse will be equal to the square root of X squared plus nine. So we have secant theta. So secant theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent that it gives you five thirds. So we'll try to solve this one for X. And we can just um, cross multiply. We have three times square root of X squared plus nine is equal to five X. Now we can square both sides and nine times x squared plus nine equal to 25 x squared. So we have nine x squared plus 81 equal to 12, 25 x squared. And if uh, subtracting nine x squared on both sides, 81 equal to 16 x squared. So that gives you x squared is equal to 81 over six. If we take the positive square root, x should be equal to nine over four. So the answer is C. The next one, find out the tangent, the solution for tangent squared x is equal to three on zero to two pi. So if you take the square root, so your tangent x can be equal to positive root three or tangent x to be equal to negative root three. For the first part, tangent x is equal to root three. We have two solutions. One is x is equal to pi over three. Another one should be in the third quadrant. So you add a pi to that is a pi over four. For the second part with tangent x equal to minus root three. So your x is in the second quadrant. So it should be two pi over three. 
and the other one should be in the fourth quadrant. So that should be um, uh, fourth quadrant. So you sub two pi. Minus two pi over three. So, wait a second. You have one twenty. The other one is two pi my minus pi over three. So that should be five pi over three. So those are the solutions. Find the amplitude period and the phase shift of this function. So what do we need to do? Be careful with this. You have to do the factoring. So pull out a one third. You have x plus three here. So this one, by looking at this negative two, your amplitude is equal to the absolute value of negative two. You have two, that's the amplitude. And we have the period will become uh, two pi over this quantity one third. You have six pi and the phase shift here. And that gives you three, uh, to the left, three to the left. So this one, uh, eliminate this, and the period is equal to six pi, so that's not true, that's not true. So between D and the E, phase shift is equal to three to the left, so the choice will be D. Which of the following functions is sketched on the graph? So what do we have here? Um, first, we have the amplitude is equal to two. So that should be um, either positive two times something or negative two times something. And here, this one looks like you, if you look at it this way, you have like a sine wave shift to the left, uh, one six unit. So then one, uh, the period, what is the period right now? So the period it goes from minus one six to eleven over six. That gives us the period is equal to two. So the period is equal to two pi over b, right? Which is equal to two. That implies you might b should be equal to pi. So uh, the function should, will look like two times sine of. You have like a pi in front of that, and you have a phase shift to the left, so that's a plus one over six. So it looks like this, if you distribute that, you have two times sine of pi x plus pi over six. Do we have one look like this? Uh, because this looks like an upside down sine wave, so the negative in front of that. So the sine wave, so that gives us um, B. Equation for the graph shown here. So it looks like the, if um, the amplitude is three and it looks like this is a cosine wave. So the period goes from minus one to one. So the period is equal to two. So again, two pi over b is equal to two gives you b is equal to pi. So this should be y equal to three times cosine of pi x. And do we have any phase shift? Your yeah, phase shift, it looks like you have a sine cosine wave shift to the left one unit, pi times x plus one. So that's three cosine of pi x plus pi. So this gives you C. Which of the following expressions equal to this one? So what we do is we try to simplify this expression, cosine square x. So what we can do is find the least common denominator. And 
so secant squared x is secant is equal to one over cosine squared. So the first one actually is equal to one over cosine square x times sine x minus sine x cosine square x. Now the least common denominator will be sine x cosine square x and one minus, and you're going to multiply sine x on top of that, so one minus sine square x. By the trig identity, the top one equal to cosine square x, and you have sine x cosine square x, and you can cancel that. You end up with one over sine x, which is the same as cosecant x. So the answer will be D. Uh, this one cosine alpha plus sine alpha. What we can do is we can square uh, just square this. You have cosine square alpha plus two cosine alpha sine alpha plus sine square alpha sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha is equal to one, and the two cosine alpha sine alpha by the double integral formula is equal to sine of two alpha. So the answer is D. Um, So we have tangent alpha is equal to three quarters. Then we have secant alpha should be equal to square root of one plus tangent square alpha. And here, because your alpha is in the um, third quadrant, your secant is negative. So that gives you minus one plus three over four squared is equal to minus um, four fifths, that's secant alpha. And that gives you cosine alpha equal to minus four fifths. And because tangent alpha is equal to three quarters, so that gives you sine alpha is equal to minus three fifths. Now with this, we can do cosine alpha plus 30 degrees. And expand that, you have cosine alpha, cosine 30 degrees minus sine alpha times sine 30 degrees. Cosine alpha is equal to minus four fifths. Cosine 30 is root three divided by two. Sine alpha is minus three fifths. Sine 30 degrees is a half. So simplify this, what you have is 10. Here you have minus four root three. And here it's minus, minus is plus, plus three. So the answer will be, um, B. Uh, number 16. So we are going to use uh, this one looks like a sine alpha cosine beta minus uh, cosine alpha times sine beta with my alpha is equal to 217 degrees, beta is equal to 97 degrees. So we know this formula is just equal to sine of alpha minus beta. So that gives you sine of 217 minus 97, that gives you 120 degrees, sine of 120 degrees, which is equal to root three divided by two. So the answer will be A. Now this one, we're going to use sine of alpha times sine of beta, which is equal to a, um, a half of cosine um, alpha minus beta. Mm, minus cosine of alpha plus beta. So with my alpha is equal to 51 pi over 72, beta is equal to 33 pi over 72. So we end up with one half cosine so alpha minus beta is equal to 18 pi over 72, which is equal to pi over four. And alpha plus beta, that gives you 84 pi over 72 divided by 12. That's seven pi over six. So you have cosine of pi over four minus cosine seven pi over six. Cosine pi over four is equal to root two divided by two. Cosine seven pi over four should be minus root three divided by two. So that becomes plus. So eventually what I, we have is just like a root two plus root three divided by four. 
So the answer is C. I'll rewrite cosine 6x minus cosine 10x as a product. So we're going to have um, a cosine alpha minus cosine beta that's equal to sine of minus two sine of alpha plus beta times sine of alpha minus beta divided by two. So here, what do we have? Alpha is equal to six X, beta is equal to 10 X. Now this one, you can just go minus two sine of alpha plus beta divided by two is eight X. Sine of alpha minus beta is minus four minus two X, but sine is an odd function. So you have positive two sine of eight X times sine of two X. And the answer will be D. Uh, 19, we did that in class. What else? Uh, and everything else, we did that in class. So that will be the solution for the final exam. A simple final exam. All right. Thank you.